In this second video on electrophilic addition in alkenes, we are going to explain the bromine water test. Now, we learned at GCSE that the test for an alkene, for a carbon-carbon double bond, was to take some of your alkene and shake it with orange bromine water, and the bromine water would decolorize if you had a double bond. So, what would the reaction mechanism for this look like? Well, let's start with propene, and we've got Br2 our bromine molecule. Now, when we look at bromine as a molecule, um, it's not positively charged and it doesn't have a delta positive atom in it. It doesn't seem straight off that this is going to be uh, a regular type of electrophile. However, when the bromine molecule comes into close contact with the electron density of the double bond, it induces a dipole in the bromine molecule. So the bromine nearest to the double bond becomes delta plus, and the one furthest away becomes delta minus. Even though this is an instantaneous dipole, it's been induced, it's very, very short-lived, that is more than enough of a reason, or an excuse, for the electrons in the pi bond to come out and attack that delta positive bromine atom. And as we saw before, the other bromine atom then leaves, taking both the electrons in the bond with it. So this is another example of heterolytic fission. We are going to form our intermediate carbocation. So H, H, we are H, C, H3. Now, once again, the positive charge, the carbocation, is far more likely to be on this carbon atom here because it has an alkyl group bonded to it. And that alkyl group is going to push electron density towards the positively charged carbon atom and help stabilize the carbocation. So that is our intermediate. Now, we have a slight change of plan at this point because we've got two nucleophiles, both of whom are going to be interested in that delta positive, well, they're not delta positive, that actual positively charged carbon atom. One is our bromide ion that was created from the heterolytic fission of the bromine molecule, but we have also got water present. And water can behave as a nucleophile because it's got a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen which can be used to make a covalent bond with a positively charged carbon atom. So two nucleophiles. The bromide ion is the stronger of the two nucleophiles because it's actually negatively charged rather than just using lone pairs from a neutral molecule. But water molecules are in excess by a huge number compared to the bromide ions. So the likelihood is that it is water that is going to attack that delta positive, not delta positive, that positively charged carbon atom, not the bromide. So let's see what that looks like. We've got lone pair of electrons. Note, I'm being very careful with my curly arrow. It's going from the lone pair, not from water in general or from the oxygen, from the lone pair to the positively charged carbon. Now, in this case, we're going to have another intermediate because we are a methyl group and bonded to this carbon is the oxygen using its lone pair or one of its lone pairs. This oxygen has still got two hydrogens attached to it. This oxygen is now positively charged because it's lost electrons. It's lost a lone pair of electrons. That lone pair of electrons are now in this oxygen-carbon bond. This is not of a state of affairs that oxygen is particularly keen on. So what it would like to do is to get its lone pair back. We have lots of water molecules present. Other water molecules are able to behave as a weak base. 
A base is a proton acceptor and it is able to abstract, isn't that a fantastic word, it's able to abstract a hydrogen from water. So let me pull that apart. Both of these hydrogens are delta positive. They're likely to be even more delta positive as oxygen pulls electrons further away from it to help stabilise its positive charge. That means that another water molecule can quite easily go in and abstract, I'm going to write that down, abstract a hydrogen atom or deprotonate the oxygen. That's another great word. Don't you just love chemistry? Our ability to make up words is just fantastic. Hydrogen is going to leave, but the pair of electrons that made up the oxygen-hydrogen bond is going to remain behind on the oxygen, with the oxygen obviously being more electronegative. So we've got two intermediates in this reaction mechanism. As we said, all these reactions happen in a step-by-step -step way. So we're going to end up with our product. Bromine, carbon, hydrogen, methyl group, OH group. We've now got an alcohol plus H3O+, plus, which is known as an oxonium ion. How are we going to name our product? Well, it is going to be, what is it going to be? Let's call it 1-bromopropan-2-ol. So the alcohol takes preference. So we'll name it from the right, 1-bromopropan-2-ol. Little dash, that should be a dash. Oh, that is our product there. Once again, if you're writing overall equations with reaction conditions, check your syllabus, check your textbook so that you use the reaction conditions that they want you to use because there's always more than one way of doing something, always more than one way of writing this stuff down. So CH2CH, CH3 plus. Br2 and it's bromine water, so it's aqueous. This is happening at room temperature. And we're going to have CH2Br, CHOH, CH3, plus a bromide ion, plus H3O+. Plus. Now, if we particularly wanted a dibromide product, so we particularly wanted this molecule here. We wanted to add bromine across the double bond and not let water get in the way. Then what we would need to do is to change the reaction condition. So we would react our propene with bromine in an organic solvent. So organic solvents are not aqueous. There's no water present, so we don't have the competition of the nucleophiles in the second step. If this has been useful, hit the subscribe button, the effortless way to support your studies. And by clicking the link in the blurb below, it will take you straight to the Crunch Chemistry School, where you'll find all the resources you need to get that A-star grade at A-level. Together we can do this.